I rise today to once again call for this body to act on common sense gun safety legislation. Time and time again, we've witnessed unfathomable carnage at the hands of assault-style rifles and high-capacity magazines. It's a horror movie we've seen over and over. As parents bury children, as infants lose parents, as America grieves the senseless loss of life, the NRA just tightens its grip on the president and the majority leader. I'm heartened by the grassroots movement that has grown across our nation in recent years. And likewise, I'm encouraged by the many polls indicating that Americans overwhelmingly want to action. Americans are tired of having their voices drowned out by the NRA. They're tired of a Congress that fears NRA attack ads more than the next mass shooting. And they're tired of being told time and time again that this is a mental health problem or a violent video game problem when we know it is a gun problem. It's time for real action in the Senate. Earlier this year, the House of Representatives passed universal background checks for every gun sale, the kind of measure that would have stopped the shooter in Midland, Texas from bypassing a criminal background check if it had been in law. And just last week, the House Judiciary Committee passed the Keep Americans Safe Act, my legislation, to limit the sale of ammunition to no more than 10 rounds. We know that a magazine that holds 30 or 60 or even 100 rounds of ammunition, like the Dayton shooter did, is not for hunting or self-defense or protecting your home. High-capacity magazines are designed for one thing, and that's high-capacity killing. It's true no single law is going to prevent all gun deaths, but it's also true we can prevent some gun deaths, and reducing magazine side size is a proven way to do so. What will it take for the majority leader to take action? I'm not the only one asking this question. Indeed, on September 3rd, the Washington Post published an editorial calling on the majority leader to act. They asked, quote, would any volume of bloodshed convince the Kentucky Republican that Congress faces a moral imperative to act? And alongside their call for action, the Post also published a staggering list of names. Names of fellow Americans who lost their lives in mass shootings, many involving high-capacity ammunition. I'd like to read as many of these names as I can in my allotted time today. Casey Bernal, Stephen Kernow, Corey DePuter, Kelly Flaming, Fleming, Matthew Kechter, Daniel Mauser, Daniel Rohrbach, William Dave Sanders, Rachel Scott, Isaiah Scholes, John Tomlin, Lauren Townsend, Kyle Velasquez, Jennifer Bragg Capobianco, Janice Haggerty, Louis Sandy Javel, Rose Manfredi, Paul Marceau, Cheryl Troy, Craig Wood, Derek Brun, Dwayne Lewis, Chase Lossier, Daryl Lossier, Neva Rogers, Chanel Rosebear, Michelle Sig Sigana, Terlene Stillday, Alice White, Naomi Ebersol, Marion Stolfus Fisher, Lena Zook Miller, Mary Liz Miller, Anna May Stolfus, Ross Abedala Almadin, Christopher James Bishop, Brian Blum, Ryan Clark, Austin Cloyd, Joyce Couturnoak, Daniel Perez Cueva, Kevin Granada, Matthew Gewaltney, Caitlin Cameron, Jeremy Herzbert, Rachel Elizabeth Hill, Emily Hilsher, Jarrett Lane, Matthew J. Laporte, Henry Lee, Liviu Lebrescu, G. V. Loganathan, Parthi 
Lumbatoron, Lorraine McCain, Daniel O'Neill, Juan Ramon Ortiz, Menal Pachal, Aaron Peterson, Michelle Pohl, or Michael Pohl, Julia Pride, Mary Reed, Seema Samaha, Walid Shalim, Shalam, Leslie Sherman, Maxine Turner, Nicole R. White, Beverly Flynn, Janet Jorgensen, Gary Joy, John McDonald, Gary Scharf, Angie Schuster, Diane Trent, Maggie Webb, Parveen Ali, Almir Alves, Mark Henry Bernard, Maria Sonia Bernard, Hong Shu Mao, Jiang Ling, Layla Cahill, Roberta King, Lan Ho, Li Guo, Dolores Yagal, Maria Zabnu, Michael Grant Cahill, Liberato Eduardo Caraveo, Justin Michael DeCrow, John Gaffney, Frederick Green, Jason Dean Hunt, Amy S. Kruger, Aaron Thomas Nemelka, Michael S. Pearson, Russell Seeger, Francesca Bellis, Juanita L. Warman, Kam C. Shoyong, Christina Taylor Green, Dorothy Morris, John M. Rowe, Phyllis Schneck, Darwin Stoddard, Gabriel Zimmerman, Demetrius Ulin, Russell King Jr., Daniel Parmator, Sharing Rinzing Butaya, Doris Chibuko, Sonam Shodan, Grace Unia Kim, Caitlin Ping, Judith O. Seymour, Lydia Sim, Jonathan Blunk, A.J. Boyk, Jesse Childress, Gordon Calgen, Jessica Gawi, John Thomas Larimer, Matthew McQuinn, Michaela Medic, Veronica Moser Sullivan, Alex Matthew Sullivan, Alexander Tevis, Rebecca Ann Wingo, Suwant Kaleka, Sovan Katra, Parunji Kaur, Parkash Singh, Runjit Singh, Sita Singh, Charlotte Bacon, Daniel Barden, Rachel D. Avino, Olivia Engel, Josephine Gay, Dylan Hockley, Dawn Hochsprung, Madeline F. Hu, Catherine V. Hubbard, Chase Kowalski, Jesse Lewis, Anna G. Marquez Green, James Mattioli, Grace McDonald, Anne Marie Murphy, Emily Parker, Jackie, Jack Pinto, Noah Posner, Carolyn Privetti, Jessica Reckos, Avil Richman, Lauren Rousseau, Mary Sherlock, Victoria Soto, Benjamin Wheeler, Allison Wyatt. Madam President, my time is almost up, but I haven't even reached the names of those who died after Newtown nearly seven years ago. So I'll close with one last point. It's heartbreaking to know that some of the people on this list might be alive today if we only had the courage to pass the Keep America Safe Act or to establish universal background checks or a new assault weapons ban. And it's just as heartbreaking to know that more names of more sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, friends and colleagues, will end up on this list in the days ahead should the Senate continue to fail to act. That's the truth. That's the truth, Madam President. Every day without action is another day closer to America's next mass shooting. The time to save lives is now. With that, I ask for unanimous consent to enter the Washington Post entire list of mass shooting victims into the record. Without objection. And at this point, I yield the floor and observe the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.